Okay, so what we're going to do then is we have two cases set at 10 o'clock and the third case on the sheet this morning or the second case in the live oral argument is Mr. David Foley and Ms. Jennifer Foley versus Orange County. And we're just gonna switch those around so that we can not sit here and waste time. Okay, well, just preliminary. Each side will have 20 minutes. The appellants uh, will reserve five minutes for rebuttal unless you tell me you want me to give you some other amount of time and then we'll, we'll note that on the clock. Uh, the arguments will be at the podium and you'll see the, there should be a yellow light that goes on when you get into your rebuttal time. Um, again, this is uh, case 21-233. Let me introduce the panel. Again, as the marshal indicated, I'm Chief Judge Lambert. I'll be presiding. To my right, to your left, is uh, Judge Wallace. And, and to my left, and your respective rights, is uh, Senior Judge Thomas Savoy. Judge Savoy used to be on this court for many, many years, and he's first time back after being retired, and we're certainly happy to have him back with us, uh, helping us out on our cases today and on Thursday. So uh, you're, you're Mr. Foley, I assume, sir? I am. Okay. Are, are you ready to proceed, sir? I am. Okay. All right, then. Uh, whenever you're ready, sir, we'll start you off. And uh, if you want, you want five minutes reserved, you want more time? That's fine. Five okay. Is fine. Thank you. Five minutes, fine. All right, so, counsel. I mean, Mr. Mr. Foley, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, I am David, and, and with me is Jennifer. We're the Foley's. Okay. Um, we have a lot of confidence in our briefs. We uh, believe that they give you all the argument, all the authorities that you need to reverse the trial court mm -hmm. and to give us the relief that we're looking for. But uh, the... What is the relief that you're looking for specifically? Um, it'll take about a minute. Uh, we asked the court to declare <coughs> void for conflict with Article 4, Section 9, Florida Constitution and enjoin enforcement <coughs> of the following. One, the building permit exaction, pet birds only, no commercial activities permitted. Two, the BCC order that prohibits aviculture with associated aviaries as an accessory use and as a home occupation. And three, ordinance 2016-19, to the extent that it ratifies the challenged building permit and BCC order, to the extent it includes the sale of birds in its prohibition of commercial retail sale of animals as a home occupation. Well, let me ask you, you're asking us to reverse the final judgment to, so that you can have this matter brought up before the trial court, correct? Right. Okay. Go ahead. Um, these are uh, issues, though, for declaratory and, and injunctive relief. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also asking the court to, um, to enjoin enforcement of Ordinance 2016-19 to the extent that it retains the standard industrial classification code 0279 in the use table in section 3877. We're also asking the court to reverse the trial court and remand for an answer and for trial on our claims in negligence, unjust enrichment, conversion and takings, and finally, we asked the court to rule that on remand we may amend After our... the, uh, the ordinance was amended, has, have you received any notification that, uh, uh, you know, that, that would indicate any interference with your uh, raising and selling of these, uh, of these birds after the ordinance had been amended? We've received no notification directly from Orange County. Uh, we Do, doesn't do. the amendment of the ordinance basically uh, inure to your benefit? Not at all. Pardon? Not at all. You don't think it does? No. No. Uh, in fact, what we argue in our brief and, um, is that 
the new ordinance really ratifies uh, the BCC order. The BCC order says that aviculture, not just commercial aviculture, but aviculture, producing birds, and associated aviaries is prohibited as a primary use, accessory use, and a home occupation. The new ordinance amended the definition of home occupation extensively, and one of the things that, and remember please, that the BCC order uh, ruled upon a definition of home occupation that did not include any express prohibition of um, anything related to animals except commercial kennel and commercial kennel exp explicitly you know, excluded animals regulated by the Florida Fish and Wildlife, and toucans are among those animals. So I, I just want to clarify that, that, that the order that we're asking uh, you to reverse or to declare void is an order that was reached without an express prohibition of what we were doing. And the new ordinance, again, amended extensively, um, now, includes an express prohibition of commercial retail sale of animals. Not so, so it's your position that even under the amended ordinance, that there's still a question whether you'll be able to proceed as, you, as you've been doing in the past? Is yes, that, not it? only under the ordinance, but I believe the order is still, still valid uh, and, and still prohibits us to do what we're doing. And the permit exaction, which was uh, commercial aviculture, pet birds only. Um, Um, so if the county gets up today in oral argument and says, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Foley can proceed with the <coughs> toucan, toucan business, whatever business that you uh, were, were adversely affected by the earlier ordinance, if, if council gets up today and says, you know, they can do exactly what they were doing before. I wish I had it, had it with me, but I mean, there is a case somewhere, I know I've, I've seen it, that says the, um, the, the confessions, the statements of council, uh, regarding what the government will and will not do is, is not is not really binding on on anyone. Uh, so that that's I think that's so my. So if answer. we write an opinion that says it is binding, well, that we'd be out of luck, wouldn't we? I mean, we <laughs> you'd be in luck, wouldn't you? It, that, I'm sorry. If, if we said the you know, council binding. today for the county said, oh by the way, the ordinance was amended specifically to uh, allow the Foley's to operate their business like they did before the old ordinance. Uh, and that's why we did it. I mean, I, that, that seems, that's kind of what Judge Sawoy is kind of suggesting. And, and I'm, I, if they get up and say that, hey, you're good to go, for lack of a better legal term. You're fine. Go forward. We'd like you to do it. If they did that, then, well, then, then issues your, the injunctive relief, the declaratory relief. Is, is but, unnecessary? If we write the opinion that says that. Well, gee, I really feel like I, like I should have brought that case with me. But, um, but again, uh, if Orange County's attorney says one thing, it doesn't bind Orange County to anything. And we've just told so you. So any representation she makes to us today won't be binding on Orange County? I'm no, just I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Good. Um, okay. And I... Um, Has uh, there been any financial damage to you and your wife's business as a result of these ordinances? Um, like you have not been able to proceed with your business as a direct result of this and has resulted in this amount of financial damage to you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had to destroy our aviary, or well, they, <coughs> um, one, we were able to rebuild it, but, we had, but when in rebuilding it to get the permit, we had to sign a permit exaction that said commercial, no, commercial activity prohibited, pet birds only. So the business that we had, we had to also abandon our website, which, well, we had to remove the for sale, um, um, birds for sale on the website. We still have the website, but we also had to remove um, advertising that was in a national magazine. And of course, you know, that was, that was before the internet took over and killed publishing, but... And, and that was a direct result of the application of the amended ordinance? No, sir. Not the amended ordinance. Is that what you ask? Yes. I, I, I apologize. That's no. okay. Um, um, no. It was the application of the earlier ordinance. Okay. Thank you. 
And you're asking for damages, or you're, you're, you're pleading for damages based upon the, the, the conversion claim, the unjust enrichment claim, the negligence claim, uh, the, those tort actions I think you refer to in count three. Uh, that's from the county's actions regarding their enforcement of the ordinance that Judge Dalton declared was invalid or void, but yes, the, the 11th Circuit said, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals said, Judge Dalton, you, you, you had no authority to go there, so. That's right. Well, let me, add, let me follow up on that, because I know your pleadings encompass a lot of information. Uh, there hasn't actually been any judicial determination, as we presently sit, that the ordinance is invalid, the original ordinance, right? I mean, you had Judge Dalton's opinion, right. order or opinion, right. and that was good for your side, for lack of a better term. Then that got set aside by the 11th Circuit. But as we sit now, you just have the rulings of the, uh, the, the board, the county commissioners, and then the, pro the cert process that you went through with the uh, Ninth Judicial Circuit, and then I guess here some years ago, correct? Okay. Go ahead. Um. So our complaint does attack two things. It attacks the fact that Orange County is regulating uh, bird, raising birds to sell, and it also attacks uh, in, our, in our negligence claim and in our unjust enrichment claim, we're attacking the procedure that Orange County used to prosecute us for raising birds to sell, because that, um, well, that cut off the remedy that we would have had had they prosecuted raising birds to sell before the Code Enforcement Board. What did you allege that they converted? I mean, they didn't actually take anything. They just prevented you from doing something. That's right. And that's, is, and that's sufficiently pleads a conversion claim, in your view? Right. I mean, it is um, constructive possession, certainly, of our right to sell birds. And the monetary value in the birds is that right, the right to sell them. Uh, so we do believe, yes, that's um, constructive conversion. Um, they obtained uh, the... Well, well, they didn't obtain them. I mean, they didn't obtain the birds. They just... not, not the birds, but the right. I mean, they, they deprived us of that right. Um, so conversion um, and constructive dispossession does cover that. I mean, when it went up, for instance, I mean, I'm just remembering that the restatement uh, has an example that says uh, when a sheriff levies on property, even though the property is still with the owner, uh, it has been converted. It, it now belongs to the sheriff. So that, that's essentially what we're saying here. You know, they've taken our right to sell the birds, so what, what can we do them? We can feed them, you know, take them to the vet, but we can't sell them, so they've taken the you know, the monetary value, the only value left is the pleasure of having them. So as to the negligence claim, you're, you're, correct me as to your position and your pleading, is that if the county negligently enforces an ordinance or negligently creates an ordinance that causes you damage, uh, that they should pay you damages under a, a tort claim? Assuming you could prove it yeah. at trial. So, I mean, <laughs> um, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear with what you're saying. I mean, well, let, let me try to clarify it. Um, the, where should I go? Um, let, me, let me give you an example of, of, what, of what we're saying. Okay. You know, two, um, two cases. Um, let, me, let me stop you for a second. Sure. I, because your wife is here too and she's a party. Did you all agree that you'd be the speaker? Is that? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, we're saying that, that, um, code violations can't be prosecuted in permitting. And that's what we're saying they did. That can be a factual matter because we're saying that's what they did and they can refute that as a factual matter. Um, but we're saying as a legal matter, it's absolutely prohibited. Article 8, Section 1J of the Constitution says, and this is in the section regarding counties, persons violating code a persons violating county ordinances shall be prosecuted and punished as provided by law, meaning statute. 
and uh, the way in which the legislature has provided Orange County with a, to prosecute violations is in uh, chapter 162 and 125. You can do it before a code enforcement board, or you can do it in county court. But what happened here is they had, they had two violations, they knew that, because we say in the complaint, what they set out to do is to stop us from raising birds to sell. They got evidence for that, they got evidence that we had built our structures without a permit, they didn't prosecute us in code enforcement for raising birds to sell. They didn't present any of their evidence that, that proved that we were raising birds to sell or that the structures were aviaries. Instead, what they did was they prosecuted us for an accessory structure. We put that in quotes in the complaint just to draw out the fact that it's in the order. It was accessory structure. Well, actually, I think it's structure because in the order it doesn't use accessory. And, um, but they didn't prosecute us for raising birds to sell. When we got to permitting, they said, no, we're not gonna give you a, a permit for that because that, that structure is an aviary. We don't allow aviaries. FWC contacted them and squared that away with them. They finally agreed, sure, we'll, we'll let you do it, but you've gotta sign this exaction, com no commercial activity. Um, we call that a prosecution and a punishment in permitting. Here's the problem with that. Our right to raise birds to sell is independent and immune to county regulation. Our right, it's, it's not in Article 4, Section 9, but Article 4, Section 9 is a constraint on county authority. The county can't, can't bother what we're doing with our birds if what they're doing is regulating the birds. You know, if they're, if they're regulating uh, structures and setbacks, et cetera, that's okay. But imagine a different case where the person the second violation is, does not involve a right that's independent of county authority. Imagine that it is a setback requirement or an oversized garage. Then, then when the county does what it's doing, it's still a violation of Article 8, Section 1J. It's still a prosecution at the permitting counter, but it doesn't result in an injury. So you, the Fifth District, would never hear about it because it would never get here. The person wouldn't have a claim. But what we're saying is we had an actual right and it was independent of county authority. So we were injured in a way that a guy who, whose second violation is an oversized garage, and I mention that because you know, such a case came before the BCC when they passed 2016-19. Mr. Foley, yes. in your, your negligence claim, a part of one of the elements of negligence is a duty, and it's a duty in this case that would be owed by the county to you and your wife. What was the duty that the county owed you as a part of your negligence claim? I'm glad you asked that. Um, we believe it's a non-delegable duty. Uh, it has to be, given that, that it arises out of Article 8, Section 1J. It proceeds through Chapter 62 and into Chapter 11 of the Orange County Code. I mean, Orange County's, the pedigree of, of Orange County's Chapter 11, the Code Enforcement Section, begins with uh, that provision in the Constitution. And, and that is a duty, as we alleged in, I think it's 62, uh, 62 B of our, of our complaint, is that they owed a duty of care uh, to either, Uh, I'd, I'd really rather quote it for you, and I don't have it right here in front of me. Jennifer has it. Do you want me to get it? Oh, or can you I can do that? it in, in your rebuttal if you yeah, choose to You're do in that. your rebuttal if you want to right. save some time. All right. But uh, again, it's, it's essentially, in the, in the big picture, it's a duty in due process. In the, when you narrow it down, it's the duty that is in Chapter 11 of the Orange County Code. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Cole. Before you start counsel, have you, you heard anything, Charlie, about the other counsel? Yes, Chief. You did not get She'll be filing some sort of explanation as to why she didn't come. I mean, she's not. In other words, she didn't. She's not bro broken down on the way up here and there. Like that. Yes, sir, she's in Fort Lauderdale. Not was not planning. Did she say she didn't get notice she of this? Didn't know about it. She said she didn't know about it. Well, she, the the attorney of record is. I think it's a Mr. Rios. Is it? Miss Rios. Miss Rios. Oh, is that Miss Rios? I'm sorry. You heard from her at all? Essentially told me the same thing that the uh, clerk just advised. 
Oh, you mean today she emailed you? She emailed me this morning, just now, uh, and said essentially the same thing. Um, I would note, I, I think that the, uh, the notice of oral argument does contain, uh, the, at least my co-counsel told me that the notice does list her name as being provided her with notice. Um, yeah. Okay, all right. Fair enough, we'll, we'll proceed. All right, thank you. All right, counsel. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning. Linda Bramer Linosa here on behalf of the Orange of Orange County. This case arises from events that occurred in 2007 and 2008 related to a code enforcement action for not having a permit for an aviary and the Foley's application to the zoning manager for a zoning decision. Both of those were unsuccessful. So what is the effect of the amendment to the ordinance? Your Honor, uh, the amendment to the ordinance, I was going to start with that, is that if you look at the uh, record. The opposing uh, party seems to think that still uh, has a tendency to put them out of business. Is that what you think? No, Your Honor. The ordinance, uh, the new ordinance, 2016-19, removed the, uh, the definition of commercial aviculture it removed commercial aviculture from the use table, table that's at R193. It removed condition 48 at R99. Um, you don't have to rely on my opinion as to the impact of that. You can look at the removal of those portions of the Orange County Code itself and see that as a matter of law, that what was enforced in 2007 or 8 that was part that wasn't enforced it was actually a board of county commissioner zoning determination is no longer in effect so so then let's just get apples to apples then so when mr and mrs foley came before the various entities back in 2006 2007 saying this is the business we run at these locations here in orange county and Orange County through the zoning board, county commissioners, whomever, said you can't do that under our ordinance that's in a place right now and that spawned litigation. And then 2016, you know, this case is now pending. The federal court is apparently done with their case, done with the case. Orange County changes the ordinance at issue. And in essence, the that what you're telling us today, or correct me if we're correct us if we're wrong if the Foley's now went back to 2005 and were operating the same business that they did back in 05, 06, 07 when it was problematic under that former ordinance, they would be perfectly permitted. I, I don't want to use that. I have a significant permit. They would be okay to go forward with their business under your present ordinance. Uh, that is my interpretation of the Orange County Code. I am not a permitting person. I do not review zoning applications, but the, what was regulated in- But, that, but that's what they're yes. saying here. I mean, they're saying, right. look, we're, you know, we've once bitten, twice shy. We've already went through this. Now you change the ordinance. Before we do this again, we want to know that we're okay. So we want a declaratory judgment. And if you guys are going to enforce it, we want it to be enjoined because we think it's void. And I'll just use Judge Dalton's verbiage. I know that got reversed later. We, we want to not go through this process again. So that's why we're, but, but what the point is, is your position apparently below successfully and with us and your argument is, look, it's, it's not right, you're good. There's no application, Your Honor. You don't sit as a zoning board and you can't make a zoning determination, but right now what was in the code in 2007 and eight is no longer in the code. So, so <clears throat> is it your position that it's not ripe, it, it may still be enforceable for whatever reason, but they haven't asked for us to make that determination, us, your they, board, et cetera. And then if the board then decides no, then it's ripe and then you're they, back to square two, I guess. As Mr. Foley admitted, there's, there are no facts alleged in the amended complaint that relate to any application of the new code to the Foley's, nothing. For that reason, all of the counts um, state, failed to state a cause of action. Is that the but, same? Is that the same analysis then as to their count for the inverse condemnation claim? I mean, because 
I mean, if you and I mean, let's let's say there's evil involved and they're specifically being targeted by by the county wrongfully, and they're saying you are basically taking our property. It's not a total taking; it's a partial taking. Under I can't remember the federal case. It's a partial taking because you're improperly doing this. Uh, that's a viable cause of action. I mean. Uh, uh, it I would, can be a viable cause of action, can't it? In this case, for example... Not the, this case. Gen, I'm, let's walk it through general. generically, right? Okay. Well, generically, the impairment of a use, their properties are still used as a house, their homestead. That's the Salandra property. The Cupid property still has a manufactured home on it and was never used in any way for the bird business. According to the allegations in the amended complaint, the Cupid property was only for a potential future expansion. Again, their future uses are speculative. No cause of action there for the Cupid property. On the Salandra property, on the Homestead property, an impairment of use is not a taking. Well, I'm, I'm just reading the 11th Circuit's footnote four. This is the application of an invalid land use regulation may form the basis of a regulatory takings claim. Uh, they then note that it might not be right because the police did not have appeared to have pursued a permit retroactively or otherwise, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, that, that's, I mean, we're here on the fact that these pleadings have been dismissed. And, and I don't know that how many, if this is just the original complaint. I mean, you know, there's obviously the, the liberal entitlement yes. to amendments. And so, I mean, it seems to me one of the questions is whether it's pleadable. I would focus on the word in the federal um, decision may, but in this case, it is not a cause of action because a zoning decision is is not. Um, it's more like a development permit, if you uh, if you will, where um, this is not a regulatory taking. It does not. There's no uh, license prior to 2007 for. Um, for the possession or the sale of two cons at the property. The zoning, the complaint from the um, citizen was in 2007, followed by a request for a, a zoning determination and a board action. But in this case, there is no taking because uh, the zoning decision doesn't rise to the level of a taking. They didn't impair all of the use of the, the property that's still used as a home. The two cons were still there. The aviary was rebuilt. As was far as the repleting goes, though, may does not mean futile, correct? The ability, something, you, you don't allow it, allow them to amend if to amend is going to be futile. May leaves open, open that there's a stronger possibility that it's not futile. Well, and I believe. If I'm correct, that was in the order dismissing the amended complaint in the federal case. They filed a second amended complaint, and they did not include a takings claim in the second amended complaint that was dismissed by the 11th Circuit. So for that reason, the Foley's did not include a takings claim in the, the federal case. Well, but, but, but why would that affect them, their ability to do that now? I mean, the federal case, the federal court said you, your federal causes of action are out, and Judge Dalton shouldn't even address the state court cause of action or the state action case, and there wasn't an inverse condemnation. So, I mean, they, they pled it now, and, and kind of following up what Judge Wallace is saying, I mean, let's, what if the Foley's pled, and I know they have to plead in good faith, what if they plead? We have tried to operate our business under this new ordinance, and the county has denied us. We think this is unconstitutional ordinance, and we want a declaration from the trial court that that's true, and that we want the ordinance to be enjoined from enforcement against us to operate our business. I mean, if they pled that, wouldn't well, there's, It's still speculative. There's no application. There's no action by the county to enforce the new ordinance in the in That's the, what I'm saying. I mean, and if, if they do that, I mean, if, if they walk out today and says, okay, we see how this is going, and, and you know, the, this is the concerns of the appellate court, you know, reading between the tea leaves, if lack of a better, lack of a better word, and they make the application and it's denied, then th they would have a viable claim then. If there was an application. Pleadable claim. If in the future they decided to apply, let's say, for a special exception or some application to operate a commercial aviculture business out of either their home or 
or their agricultural property, then at that time, if and when the facts become known, then that, at that time it would be ripe. And same thing and with- Judge Lambert is, is alluding to and getting, I think directly said, if they assert specific facts, can they meet that threshold to then move forward um, without facing dismissal? Uh, I mean, the facts will either be proven or not proven later in the case but they would meet that threshold. Is that correct? Um, no, Your Honor, because the case law is clear that in the zoning context, if you look at cases such as um, uh, other cases besides Pinellas versus Ashley, like Alachua Land Investors versus Gainesville, that's at 107 Southern 3rd, 1154. It's a first DCA 2013 case. It basically said the denial of a particular use is not a taking. And in that case, um, it had to do with an, um, a plat application that presented no alternative design plans. Similarly, another case that- um, well, Let me understand <coughs> the, the history. I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, or if it's not pled, then correct me as well. But it, it seemed like they had this, the Foley's had this business an ordinance comes into play after they've been running this toucan, I'll just call it toucan operation, and I don't mean that in any, derog I mean, whatever the term, I don't wanna get bogged down in the phraseology, but they're running their, their business, an ordinance comes in or enacted, then there's, a, I guess, a citizen's complaint, and that starts the process in 2007, 2008. Uh, absent that 2007 ordinance, apparently things were going okay for them, and vis-a-vis the, -vis the county. The ordinance comes in, the county says you can't do this, and obviously the counties prevail, and then that spawned the federal litigation, and that ended as we've discussed, and now we're here now, and, and again, your position is we've, the ordinance in 2016 has cured all this, but we're not sure because they haven't applied to go forward under the 2016 ordinance and got denied, and they have to do that, and if they did that, then it seemed like your case for dismissal with prejudice as to counts one and two would be significantly weakened, wouldn't it? Well, counts one and two are either not ripe or moot. Um, there's no nothing for this court to review. Um, they could go ahead and decide to operate their, their business um, their, if they, they chose to. Um, there's there's no, no facts that form the basis of a facial challenge that's requested in counts one and two. It's not an as-applied challenge, it's on its face. And on its face, um, this a court does has the discretion to decide not to review um, the facial validity of an ordinance that hasn't even been applied. Um, there, to do so would amount to an improper advisory opinion that would be contrary to the requirements of Apthorpe and also um, not present a bona fide dispute based on present ascertainable facts. So clearly there's no, and can be no, with the facts pled, cause of action for declaratory relief on the face of either an ordinance that's no longer in place or a new ordinance that's no longer been applied. There's no way amendment would be futile as to counts one and two. Never. You're, they're, they're just premature, at least to their first two counts, is basically the county's position. Or it's not, or it's moot, yes, Your Honor. Well, it's premature. They, I mean, you're arguing, you're saying they haven't applied, so there's no controversy because they haven't been denied yet, if they apply to do what they did in the past, and again, I'm just broadly basing the term, if they apply to do it in the past and saying, okay, now that we've set an oral argument in front of those people over in Daytona, we're now gonna make an application to get our up and running under the 2016 ordinance, and then somebody has to tell them no, and then they, you know, they're not gonna wanna face getting fined daily for violating the ordinance, they're gonna wanna bring an action it, and there's, there are two separate things. One is the code enforcement case, or that was related to building the aviaries without a permit that followed chapter 162 and in chapter 11 of the Orange County Code. They corrected that. There was a permit. They're claiming that permit was an exaction, but permits expire. So I would object to that. The other case is a zoning case that was based on zoning uses. Can I use my home for a business? 
You know, that's a typical land use scenario. In other words, if a homeowner living in a residential property wanted to open up a PetSmart, you know, in the middle of a residential neighborhood, that would be a land use decision, and they would have to seek a zoning determination, which follows a different process. That process is through the Board of Zoning Adjustment, then the Board of County Commissioners, and in this case, the ninth and the fifth, um, all of which affirm the propriety of Orange County's um, decision to, that said that a commercial aviculture business is not an allowable use in the R1A residential property. There was no decision about the agricultural property at all, none, Cupid, no allegation in the complaint regarding birds there. Um, but as to the homestead, it's always been homestead, it's used as, um, as a home. It's the zoning decision um, is, is basically for, unlike code enforcement, which involves like existing violations on existing structures, zoning has to do with development. Generally speaking, future uses. Can you use this property zoned R1A for commercial? I'm taking it to the extreme. And they get the permission for a rezoning if they want. If, if that's an allowable rezoning, they can seek permission for a rezoning or a special exception or a variance. There's um, the cases that I cited previously, including Tinnerman and Alachua. They, they talk about that being a, a process where, you know, it's not just this is what I want to do, take it or leave it. It's an, it could be um, a process where there might be other options. Let like, me ask, should, should counts one, two, and four have been dismissed with prejudice? Yes, Your Honor. Why, okay. I, I mean, I know they were, but I mean, basically, it seems like the, the trial judge below was saying that you, you don't have a case in controversy as to uh, number one and two. Uh, I'm not sure about number four, maybe. but uh, let's, let's focus on number one and two, but uh, okay. because it's not right. And uh, so, or uh, moot. Number one, Solandra, on the, on the ordinance that is now no longer in existence that was amended, it's moot. There's no reason for this co court to go back or a court to go back and look at an ordinance that's no longer in place. It was amended. And so for that reason, any review of an existing ordinance is now moot. It would not result in any benefit. Uh, regarding the new ordinance, um, the new ordinance has never been applied. There's no allegation in the complaint saying that's it's been applied. Mr. Foley conceded that it's never been applied, that nothing, per, no damages pertain to the new ordinance. You can't look at the facial validity of an ordinance without any facts. How do you, you know, what would, how would you think that the county would in, interpret that? There are no facts there. That would be speculative. That clearly would be an advisory opinion that's improper under Epthorpe. Um, and numerous cases say that it's not this court's province to issue an advisory opinion on a, uh, a law that hasn't been applied. You have to have standing, you have to have a case or controversy, it has to be just, justiciable, it has to result in a, a benefit. It would strictly be an advisory opinion. And the same thing pertains to count two. So we'd be beyond our jurisdiction to issue an advisory opinion. Well stated, Your Honor. Thank you. Despite Judge Soy being an activist judge and wanting to do things like that. Okay. And count, <laughs> count two is even more so because, more so not ripe or moot, because there's been no application for the agriculturally zoned pro property that was zoned for a special exception when the commercial aviculture category was in place, but there was no application ever for a special exception for the agricultural property, and that um, was only purchased according to the allegations in the complaint for future expansion. On the takings, I think um, it, that is an issue just because um, there, you know, there is a claim regarding the, the loss of um, 
let's see, money because of permitting fees or court costs or maintenance, maintenance costs to maintain the license, that those elements of costs were voluntarily paid and don't amount to a taking regarding uh, the zoning determination, again, following Alachua and um, Tinnerman. There is, um, there were, it, it's not, it didn't rise, those cases hold that the zoning determinations don't rise to the level of a taking because um, it's not an all or nothing prospect. It's not, I wanna use this property for this one thing and nothing else. They were using it for their home, but to operate as a commercial business, you know, the way they, were, they wanted to operate or they were operating, it's, it's not, it falls squarely within the, the cases of Tinnerman and, and Alachua, which denied the inverse claim. On the negligent sovereign immunity bars, as well as the torts, and there's no state cause of action um, for damages under a constitutional violation, according to Garcia. Okay. And there's no right to amend, Your Honor. All right. All right. It thank you, Counsel. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Foley. Thank you. All right, go ahead, <laughs> sir. Um, first, I believe the trial court said we had no property at issue, and uh, that could have been the starting point for the order, but it definitely said that. I think there's been a uh, confusion as to what property we're um, trying to recover. It's not uh, real property. We're not making a takings claim with respect to real property. We're making our takings claim with respect to our personal property in the birds. Uh, this is not then a taking that has anything to do with a single uh, land use, the loss of a single land use. We, we, we do know better than that. So this is just about the personal property. And I do think the the county and the court below were confused on that issue. Um, are you are you still operating your Tucan business? Are you still in operation? We still have two cans, but we're not. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Yes, we still. No, excuse me. No, we're not operating the business. Yes, we still have two cans. I mean, there are, there are a sorry. It's a small species of toucan, and we have fewer and fewer. Um, we you know we lost one just just last week, so. Um, um. Can I ask you about your claim about leaving, that the trial court erred in not giving you leave to amend? That's leave to amend counts five and six, is that correct? Yes, we would like leave to amend to bring counts five and six against Orange County. We do think that the court has to resolve this, or we would like the court to resolve this on a theory of non-delegable duty. Non-delegable duty, uh, is a theory of primary liability, not, not uh, vicarious liability. Uh, under that theory, it doesn't matter how bad uh, or how illegal you know, the actions were of the employees or uh, officials, um, the, the duty is, is with the county. And we think that uh, the constraints that we're talking about, Article 4, Section 9, and 8, Section 1J, um, provide an opportunity for the court to, to look at this as a, as a non-delegable. Your proposed causes of action are, your, your proposed causes of action on, in counts five and six against the county would be what? what they would be, uh, they, one is civil theft. Uh, the other, um, some of them are duplicative, but I think, um, Well, abusive process, invasion of privacy and rightful activity. Okay. They're all essentially under the same facts. If there's any problem with our, with our takings claim, uh, it, it is, it would, I think, be that it's, that it's duplicative of the, of the conversion claim. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm saying that, I, I, but that's the only problem that I think that, that the court should have with it. We do have property at issue. It is personal property. Um, we are, well, of course, I, I think we are trying to recover business damages, and the court hasn't asked about that on takings, uh, but the trial court didn't say anything uh, on it either. But there is a case, Bacchus, 
that, uh, that is the root of all, all Florida decisions on the issue of business damages as a taking. And it says that where the business, well, it doesn't say, it says normally business damages are not permitted in takings because the business is not entirely destroyed because it could be picked up and moved somewhere else. We'd have to move out of Orange County to do this. So that's why we believe that under this case, I mean, in the facts of this case, we could seek business damages. Mr. Foley, what is your non-delegable duty? <coughs> that you're, you say this, the county owes to you? What is the non-delegable duty? To prosecute code violations as provided by law. Article 8, Section 1J. Okay. So it's a, a duty to properly enforce the law. Okay. Oh, it, that means that I don't want to put words you. I think that's, it's just that's specific there in Article 8, Section 1J. Um, all right, uh, you're a little past your time. You want to wrap up and? Uh, yes, well, um, <laughs> no, I, I will thank you. And uh, I, I, it, it does sound, after the, the argument that you have, um, you're familiar with the case. There is, um, there is Bell v. Vaughan, which, which says, um, you know, the legislature tried to call Lake Okeechobee and, and St. John's salt water. And, and the, you know, the judge said, no, it's fresh water. So, Fish and Wildlife have jurisdiction. We're using that to say they, they want to regulate retail sale of animals, you know, all animals. <clears throat> We're saying that under, and, and remember, you, you heard them argue that um, the, 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 the cities and the county's position in Benison, where, where they said it hasn't been enforced yet, so you, there's no cause. Well, that's, that's not the basis. We have investment-backed uh, expectations, and we're in line with the law. And we, we would like those determinations. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Foley, Ms. Foley. All right. We'll stand adjourned.